Peter had the nerve to ask Jesus, can I walk out there? On, can I come to you on the water? You're walking on the water, Jesus. Can I walk on the water? Can I come out and play with you? Can I come out there and walk on water? And he said, come. I'm going to start with sharing the screen for us to share a scripture. He said to his disciples, therefore, I will Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat or about your body and what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. Notice the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. How much more important are you than birds? Can any of you, by worrying, add a moment to your lifespan? If even the smallest things are beyond your control, why are you anxious about the rest? Notice how the flowers grow. They do not toil or spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass in the field that grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? As for you, do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not worry any more. All the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these other things will be given to you besides. So the message Ellen and I discussed in the beginning of it was, people, we've noticed that people in general I mean, and this is people everywhere and every, in, in our churches, in our communities, in our families, in our greater families, in our wherever we go, are seeking the answer, are seeking uh, deliverance, are seeking healing instead of seeking the healer, instead of seeking the deliverer. So that's what we want to discuss today, the importance of seeking God, not just the answer. And to know the difference. I, I encounter so many people who, who I talk to or who contact me or they text me or they phone me and they are they're Christians and they are miserable. They're struggling. They're really having a difficult time. And I spend time with them and I, they want me to pray for them. I pray with them. And I, and I really feel that we are, we are what we eat. They say, you know, you are what you eat. I, be I believe the secret is being in the presence of the Lord, about being with the Lord, about being with Jesus, dwelling with Jesus, being in his word. There's something different about his word. His word is living. So my words, I have to say my words are not living. My words are the words of a human being. There is power in my words, but... His words are life. So when he speaks, it is. So if God declares that the, if God said that the, the sky is green, the sky would become green. You know, his words are, are living. And mm -hmm. this, I think there's this a secret about being in the word of God and becoming infused with the word of God and filled with the life that is within the word of God. We've got to change from wanting God to, I yeah. mean, for wanting him to do something for us to really wanting him. And I think this is where the breakthrough comes. It, That's amazing. I, That's we, we say, hey, I just need this and I'll be happy. And this yeah. is what God showed me. If I just get this, if I just have this, I'm going to be okay. But the problem is once you get that, you're not okay. And you're not happy because you don't have him. And I'm not speaking to you guys. You guys are here. You guys obviously are here because you want God. I am not speaking to you. If I'm saying I just, I need something and I need this and that's what's going to make me happy. If, if I'm still seeking God to do something for me, when he does it for me and I don't have him, I'm still going to be empty. I'm still going to be just as needy. Yeah. And so that's why he's saying, okay, because so on, in the scripture, he says, all the nations of the world seek for these things. And your father knows that you need them. But instead, he says, seek first the kingdom of God, and I will give you that besides. If you seek first me, you're going to get everything else besides. 
And, the, and he even says in verse 29 of that Luke, Luke passage, it says, as for you, do not seek what you are to eat or what you are to drink and do not worry anymore. All the nations seek after these things and your father knows you need them, but seek first <clears throat> instead seek his kingdom and all these things will be given you besides. I just want to read this again. <laughs> I want to read it because I found it in my notes where I actually wrote it out. So I want to read it. If you want the healing or the breakthrough and not relationship with God, you will get the breakthrough and still have nothing. Yeah. yeah. And, but this is what God says. If you seek me first, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you everything. The Matthew version of this passage says, seek first the kingdom of God and I will give you everything else, everything that you're seeking besides. There's so much coming for you. There's so much coming. Do you think that sometimes we, as Christians, we have a duty to go to church, a duty to have a quiet time where we read a passage of the Bible, a duty where we pray. But this is the thing. After we've done our Christian duty, we go into the world to relax. We go into the world to be for pleasure, for fun, to be regenerated. So we go into Netflix, we go into food we go into a, a sport we go into whatever people do and i think that's really interesting mm. I, I think for myself i can get drawn i can, i sense that i can get drawn into that you know i can there's a duty of the lord but then it's that's like eating the vegetables you know oh my gosh right you so, gotta do you gotta do it because it's good for you and you know mm. people, you gotta do it and then after you've done that, you can go, go and have your, you know, chocolate afterwards, which oh, is that's great. So good. And, and it's and it's like the wrong way round, you know. And it's I think it's about lingering, that spending that time in the word with Jesus and discovering him, finding him in a new way. And it's gonna be better than chocolate. <laughs> and he says you can have your chocolate too. He this is God. You can yeah. have your cake and eat it too. But your that time with God is going to become so incredible that it is like eating chocolate. And he also wants us to enjoy the things of this world too. It's just. You know, I've got a couple of scriptures I just wanted to read, which I thought was quite interesting from Psalm 1. Um, so blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. So that's really interesting to me that he's, this person this, is meditating on the word of God day and night. So we read the word and we think about the word and we allow the word to minister to us. But it says, he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season and its leaf will not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. And I think that as Christians, I believe that's what we should be doing. We should be bearing fruit, our leaves not withering, full of joy, full of peace, satisfied and content. And I believe there is a place for, for all of us to be like that. Isn't that awesome? What a promise. This is his promise to us. You, your leaves will not wither, and all that you do will prosper. Wow. Ah, yep. there's prospering coming your way because God wants you to prosper, prosper in the ministry, prosper in everything you do in that, in all that you do in all that you do, they will prosper. You will prosper. Hmm. Who, who are those people he's talking to? Those who delight in the law of the Lord, who meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water. So good. You know, if a, we, we obviously, we, it's wrong to become legalistic about these things. So if we say, if we make a rule that everyone is to read 20 chapters of the Bible every day, you know, you can do that in such a way and, and really perhaps not benefit too much from it because you're doing it as a religious act and, you know, you probably still will benefit to some degree. I heard, um, I heard about somebody who was dietary, had a dietary deficiency uh, because of what they've been eating for a number of years and they changed their diet radically and they said it was a very thin woman actually it's very quite well but she was she began to 
gorge on certain types of food that she needed, her body needed it, and she be began to eat a lot of, of these certain types of food. And I think that I see that as Christians a lot of the time, that we we are in need of, of a huge input of, of calories and vitamins and minerals and high quality foods. No. You know, I, and I actually think the secret to all of this is the word of God. But it's hard to say that without it becoming something that's a religious act where we have to, we all have to spend two hours reading the Bible every day. I think it's, it's different to that. Ellen, what you're saying is, you know, we've got to stay in the word of God. We really, really do. Otherwise, we're going to become like these ministers and these people of God who fall away and have affairs or turn to pedophiles or become something. There's no way you can become that if you're standing on the word of God and you're remaining in the word of God and you're remaining with God. You cannot have that happen to you. The only way is if you move off of your firm foundation and go off on your own. So it's so, so important for not just ministers, but for all of us to be always and standing firm on, on firm ground. So the message is seek and keep on seeking, you know, keep, seek the, the Lord, seek the kingdom of God and keep on seeking and don't get distracted. I was reminded of Peter when he was walking on water. This is kind of exciting because I, I truly believe that God has walking on the water opportunities for us. He doesn't want us to just you know, go through a, an okay, miserable life. He wants us to have this great life. And, and it's walking on water type life. Peter had the nerve to ask Jesus, can I walk out there? And can I come to you on the water? You're walking on the water, Jesus. Can I walk on the water? Can I come out and play with you? Can I come out there and walk on water? And he said, come. Peter wanted something amazing and he got it mm -hmm. until he got distracted. And so when we remain with our eyes on Jesus, we won't get distracted by things that are going to bring us down. Like God doesn't mind us having our lives full. My life is full. I don't just um, read the Bible, but every single thing that I do do, I do with God. I'm not, I don't ever leave God on a shelf and go off and do, but he wants me to. Uh, experience a full life. And I believe his full life for me is way fuller than anything anyone in this world is experiencing. Mm -hmm. He wants us to experience walking on water experiences. And when you lay hands on somebody and they start jumping up and down with joy, the thrill of that is beyond your wildest imagination. The thrill of seeing some, your prayers answered that you're praying for is such a thrill it's as if you're walking on water and that's what god wants for you do you want to walk on water seek the creator of the universe do you want to see breakthrough my i mean our message my message is today do you want to see breakthrough look to the breakthrough and seek the breakthrough the breakthrough is jesus <laughs> seek the 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 god of the breakthrough you know one day i was telling my husband i said mark and I was praying for somebody with cancer. And I said, she needs breakthrough. She needs a breakthrough, Mark. I'm talking to my husband. And he said, Jesus is the breakthrough. I'll never forget that. Because we're seeking the breakthrough. And God's saying, just seek the God of the breakthrough. Always seek the God of the breakthrough. Don't seek just the answer. I think the answer is spending time with the Lord. Yeah. You can start with actually setting time aside and opening the Bible and reading beginning to read and the and the word of god will start to change a person's mind a person's heart amen convicts us it just do it huh i think just it's like a relationship isn't it you know when you're struggling in your relationship what do you do you spend time you have to spend time i mean yeah. if you have a disagreement it takes time to sort out or it does with us anyway you know and um speaking in tongues is is crucial it's mm. absolutely so important you got to do it don't you yesterday's tongues aren't good enough for today you got to do it again today you know everything is again today today's a new day his mercy is new every day but so is your seeking him is new every day yeah your time with the lord is is today what yesterday's time with the lord doesn't cover today's time with the lord but the priest today said was talking about benedict saint benedict and that he started these 
um, priesthoods or uh, monkhoods, whatever. He started something. Then everybody started to adapt his rules. And one of his rules was silence. We were going to have a silent time during the day. And I thought, you know what that means for us? We've got to have some time during the day where everything's off. The phone's off. The computer's off. The TV's off. The music's off. Communication with the outside world is off. Your time with God is now. You know, you know, a friend of yours that you really like, David Wilkerson, this is how he began his whole ministry. David yeah. Wilkerson started Teen Challenge. He started saving people in gangs in New York a long time ago. And he did not know what he was a preacher, but he did not know what God had called him to do. So he said, I'm just going to set some time every night for one whole hour while I do nothing but, but hang out with you, Lord. When we don't have it inside us, when we don't feel that burden or we don't have that feeling, when we when we turn the TV off, like he did, and we spend time with the Lord, we open our Bibles, we call upon his name. This is the this is what encourages me, is that it's not about me and my human effort to draw near to God, because I know that God, I can ask the Lord to give me zeal for him. I can ask the Lord to give me enthusiasm for him. I can ask the Lord for anything. Oh, and that's good. It's amazing. And uh, I was just thinking as you were saying that about David Wilkerson, because as he turned the TV off, he began to pray. And I don't think he was, he wasn't, he wasn't easy, but his eyes fell on a magazine and there was a picture of some gang guys on the front of it. And he sort of, and then the Lord put it on his heart to pray for these men. And he began, and the Lord built that. And he, he said, he said he would, he would be driving his car and he'd have to stop and go off onto the side of the road because he was weeping and he just had to pray. The burden of prayer for these men was so heavy. He'd have to pray for half an hour, for an hour for these men weeping, you know, and he would do that throughout the day. He'd have to just, but the Lord put that on his heart and, and built that into him. But it started with, with, with him making a decision to, create some space in his life to spend time with Jesus. And I was just thinking of this verse um, that I'm really aware of in my own life um, so much. I keep on referring to it, but Psalm 37, verses 3 and 4. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and practice faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So we may not really have much love or, you know, zeal for the Lord, but as we delight ourselves in him, which means spend time with him, hmm. look to him, he will begin to put desires. This is what, this is, this is what I do. Okay. I ask, I expect the Lord to put things in my heart that I didn't have before, which is like a love for him, a love for his word. Um, peace, joy, contentment, satisfaction, uh, authority, power, whatever it is, I can ask him to put those desires in my heart, desire for righteousness, a desire for God. I can ask him for those desires and he will put those desires in my heart and take away other desires that I may have. And then he will then give me what I'm desiring. So it's all about him. It's not a, it's not, this is not a work of the flesh. This is not for people who are strong and who are saying, oh, from now on, I'm going to be good and I'm going to search, seek the Lord every day. If you don't want to do that, just tell the Lord, be honest and ask him to put a desire in you to seek him. And if you don't, if you feel that God isn't very exciting or his word is boring, just tell him and ask him to give you a love for, him, for the Bible. And he will. And then when you have that love for the Bible, you'll want to read it. And it, so Amen. it's amazing. He's so great. He's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Amen. He did that for me. So I asked him for that. I said, give me a hunger for your word. You know, the other thing about breakthrough that uh, <laughs> this is, this is going to be hard, but the other reason we're not getting breakthrough is because we're not obeying him. And when I say obey him, I don't mean go and make sure you're obeying all the Ten Commandments. I'm saying obey where he leads. If he's saying go to the right and you don't, you're going to get what you 
what going straight gave you. And God say, and what God is showing me, when you, if you want the breakthrough, you've got to obey him because he's telling you how to get breakthrough. He's actually going to tell you. And I had this friend of mine's brother, and I know both of them, uh, Jen and Brandon. And Brandon was driving a 12-passenger van. And as he was driving, he did not have a seatbelt on, and he heard the Holy Spirit say, put your seatbelt on. And he just kind of ignored it, but it was so loud. He heard it so loud. It was screaming, put your seatbelt on. So he immediately put his seatbelt on. And after he put his seatbelt on, there was a crash right in front of him. And the car, the, the part of the crash came where the car came right in front of him and it rolled right in front of him, causing his van, 12 passenger van to flip and flip and flip. And it flipped all the way out of the road and onto the onto the grass and when they came and found him he was perfectly fine but every single window in that van they have pictures of the van every single window in the van was broken and crushed and the van was crushed everywhere but exactly where he was he was like in a total bubble and i think sometimes we're in the place where we are because we went left when god said right and so I'm saying that's that's all in the past. You can't undo what you did, but and it doesn't matter because God his mercy is new every day. Today's a brand new day to follow him, to follow him more cl clearly, more closely. Joe had his hand up. <clears throat> yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, and he's got his microphone. Go, go, Joe. Good. I love it. good. You sound so good. So. You know, um, I have a problem with um, giving talks with notes in front of me because, you know, because of my glasses, I have to do that. And it's very unwieldy to go to a, a congregation and start you know, doing that. So I'm relying more and more on the Holy Spirit to give me what he Praise wants. God. You know, and I find myself saying things which I never thought of <laughs> before. You know, one of the things um, um, I think 15 days ago, I was invited to a prayer group to give a 45 minute talk. And, you know, one of the things I said, I said, look, there's this um, devotion in, in our church of the divine mercy, you know, with, with the two rays going out. And I said, it's OK, um, do it. And I said, but if you are going to minister to people, Look at that picture, not as in front of you, but as in your heart, and the rays of Jesus coming out of you, right? So when you are touching people, it is Christ in you who is oozing out his power through your body, you know. Um, That's so good. What, you're seeking the presence of the Lord, seeking to be in the presence of the Lord, yep. which is not. It's not necessarily a feeling. I had a friend and she spent an hour each morning with the Lord, reading the Bible and praying. And she felt one day she just, sometimes she felt some things. One day she felt absolutely nothing, no presence of the Lord or anything. And she finished and she was walking home. The Lord said to her, I so enjoyed our time together this morning. And, it, and she realized the presence of the Lord. And it's so great that the Lord is with us. He's with us now. His presence is with us. And so we can rest in that, whether That's we feel so it or not. Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is living. And I think to spend time in the word, to read and to just meditate and to think and to dwell, to slow down. I'll tell you something I've been doing because it's not always easy to stop and read. So I've been listening to the word of God. And there's a, there's a dramatized version on YouTube of... Um, the new king james i've been listening to that and it's really great and you can listen to whole letters of paul you know you can mm. listen to one corinthians and two corinthians and listen to the whole the whole two books whilst you're doing something else driving or working or whatever and it's you get a different feel of it it's um it's it's a real secret get into the word when jesus is lord yeah nothing else matters when jesus is truly lord then whatever anyone else thinks doesn't matter. 
you'll forgive whoever he calls you to forgive because nothing else matters but him. Mm. And that's when, when Jesus is Lord, you're, you don't care what anyone else thinks you, no one can hurt you. No one can upset you. No one can move you. And that's our goal. Our goal is to be unmovable immovable where our peace is never destroyed our peace is never shaken because we are on because jesus is first place in our life and when he's first place it doesn't even nothing else matters because we know deep down he wants good for us and we know he's bringing about good things for us we know he has good plans for us so we won't be worried about what it looks like or feels like or what what's coming or circumstances or what someone says about us, or what, how somebody hurts us, we can literally do all things through through Christ who gives us strength. The last point I wanted to make was give and it will be given back to you, pressed down. And when we have Jesus as Lord, we are givers. We're going to obey and we're going to give. I just, I just wanted to say that we are all entitled to this place. Um, yeah. It's not that I've arrived. It's like I tell you, I've just tasted. I've just tasted, and I and but we're all entitled to this place with the Lord. We're all right. invited, and you know, it's like the passage in Isaiah when it says, you know, um, come all who are thirsty, come all who are hungry, eat. You know, why why waste money on on what is not bread? This this place is available to each one of us, and the Lord is 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 saying, you know, I'm here. I'm available. Uh, I want to meet with you. 